There are 66 books that make up the canon of scripture, and it was finished with the book of Revelation, and there is no better way of finishing the Bible than with the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is written to us to reveal the things to come. What are some of the things it reveals to us? It reveals to us Jesus Christ, Revelation 1 verse 12 to 14, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. Revelation reveals to us the Eternal One, the Lord Jesus Christ, the One from everlasting to everlasting. The Lord Jesus Christ did not have a beginning in Bethlehem of Judea. He is the Eternal One, the Judge and the King. He is God Almighty, the Judge and Ruler. He has always been here and will forever be here. And that is where the book of Revelation begins. It begins by identifying Christ and putting in his rightful place as God and revealing who he really is. If you truly want to know who Jesus Christ is, go to the book of Revelation. In Revelation 4, the throne in heaven is revealed to us. When John says, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. And around the throne of God were the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. In Revelation 6 through to 8, we see the seals being opened one after the other, one after after the other. And the earth will see a time like never before. And in Revelation 8, the seventh seal is open, and something strange happens. This is the only time recorded in the Bible where this will happen. All heaven will be in silence. For about half an hour, complete and utter silence. All the innumerable number of angels and the saints of God that are now in heaven will all be silent for half an hour. Why? Because the trumpets are about sounded upon earth and for 30 minutes all of heaven is silent. And then finally, Revelation 8 verse 2 to 6 reads, And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And then we see the trumpets being blown. The first trumpet caused the vegetation to be struck, 
and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The second trumpet caused the seas to be struck. John saw the second angel sounding his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. The third trumpet caused the waters to be struck. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. Then the fourth trumpet, the heaven struck. Revelation 9 verse 12 reads, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then the fifth trumpet, Apollyon the destroyer, was released. No wonder heaven was silent for half an hour. Revelation 13 verse 15 to 18 And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. The issue of the mark of the beast is centered around idolatry and worship. The issue of the mark of the beast is centered around idolatry and worship. Revelation 13 verse 1 to 10 And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. He will look wonderful, be charming and successful. He will be energized by the very power of hell. You have never seen such demonic charisma. He will deceive people. He will deceive nations. He will deceive millions. 
He will be demonically energized. Millions will worship him. He will be an emblem of reconciliation. He will be a symbol of peace, a beacon of hope, a path to utopia, a guiding light full of false promises. He will look like the solution and appear as an angel of light. He will come like a sheep, but he is a wolf. He will come like a lamb, but he is a dragon. He will come with no corruption, but he is full of corruption. Don't be left out in the dark. Be ready. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 of the King James Version says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We have read in the Bible many times that the beast will come and will issue a mark for everyone. The central theme in Revelation 13 is worship, and a lot of people miss this. The devil's objective is to be worshipped. He is hell-bent on receiving worship and adoration. This is the reason why he was cast out of heaven. He wanted to exalt himself to the position of God. He wanted to be like the Most High. And even till this day, he still wants to be worshipped. He attempted to get Jesus to worship him. And the book of Revelation reveals to us that there is a time coming where he will enforce a mark. The Bible refers to this as the mark of the beast. And this mark will signify who you worship. A time will come when the mark will be given to people, and without it, no one will be able to buy or sell. But right now, people are already worshiping the devil. Who are you worshiping? The issue of worship is so important, but I believe we grossly underestimate it. The Bible is clear. There is no middle ground. It's either you are worshiping God or you are worshiping the devil. There is no such thing as spiritual neutrality. The Bible clearly sets up a dividing line. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 of the King James Version says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. The Bible clearly sets up a dividing line time and time again. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. Here we see two groups, those who are perishing and those who are being saved. 1 John chapter 4 verse 3 says, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Are you still waiting for the time when a beast will come out of the sea or earth and give marks to the people? Are you still waiting for the time when they will start forcing people to collect the mark 666? Are you in the dark? If that is what you're waiting for, that means you are in the dark, because shadows of the mark of the beast are already in the world today, and that is the act of worshipping the Antichrist. The Bible tells us clearly that the spirit of the Antichrist is already here on earth. I have been asked the question so many times, if the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the earth, why then has he not yet been revealed? Why has the Antichrist himself not taken center stage in human civilization? And that is an excellent question. We can find the answer in the Bible. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 7 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. Verse 7 gives us the answer. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. The Bible does not clearly define who he is in this verse, but in my opinion, he is the Holy Spirit. But the Bible does not definitely say to us who this restrainer is. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. There is someone in place restraining Satan and his demonic forces from rolling out their plan today. 
the wonderful thing we need to know is that Satan cannot do what he wants whenever he wants. He is indeed a powerful being that should not be taken lightly, but he is not all-powerful. He is indeed mighty, but he is not the Almighty. There is only one Almighty, and that is the Lord God. The Bible reveals to us there is a restrainer, and he is at work. And he will continue to be at work until he has been taken away. And when he is taken away, my oh my, the world is in for a shock. When he is taken away, that is when we see the cataclysmic events that happen in the book of Revelation. That is when we see Apollyon the Destroyer being released. That is the reason why the Lawless One has not taken center stage yet. There is a restrainer. It was a direct order from God that we must not worship anything on earth, be it money, be it human beings, be it spiritual powers. We have been told never to worship them. Are you worshiping them? Are you still allowing the love of money to push you to the devil? Are you allowing lust to push you to the devil? The issue of worship is what the Mark of the Beast is all about. People will gravitate towards the Antichrist when he comes. He will be demonically energized and there will be a demonic charisma about him. But he will come as a man of peace. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. After an angel showed John the revelation, John did something bad. John must have been aware of the commandments of God that we must not worship anything on earth and in heaven except God. But as a human being, he made a move to worship the angel. Revelation chapter 22 verse 8 of the King James Version says, And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. What these verses are telling us that I want us to pay attention to is that there will be times when we will be moved to worship something else. Some things will appear marvelously, and we will be moved to worship them. There are times when we will see great things and we will want to worship them, but we must never do that. John was moved by the appearance of the angel, or the things the angel showed him, that he wanted to worship him. I say this point to highlight the fact that there is something about us humans which longs to worship. Did you know that John did this not once, but twice? He did this the first time in Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 of the King James Version when it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. There is something about us humans which longs to worship. This is why I am saying the issue regarding the mark of the beast has already started. Because simply put the issue regarding the mark of the beast is an issue of worship. And the issue of worship started when Satan wanted to exalt himself above the Most High. In the end times, the mark of the beast will be a literal mark that people will put on their foreheads and right hands, which will signify who they worship. The mark of the beast has not arrived yet, but the central issue, which is a contention of worship, has already started. We are living in the book of Revelation, and the book of Revelation speaks to our generation and it's calling each and every one of us to make a decision and commit to whom we will worship. In the life of every human being, there is a yearning to worship. In God's plan, the object of your worship is a sovereign decision that one has to make for themselves. In our context as children of God, when we give our life to Christ, we have made the decision to worship Him. However, if people don't make such decisions to give their life to Christ, they end up with another object of worship. Before we expand, 
We must know and acknowledge our object of worship is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Philippians 2 verse 9 Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. The Real Reason Why a Lot of People Will Take the Mark of the Beast Revelation 13 16 and 17, King James Version. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. You know, when reading the book of Revelation, we read about the mark of the beast, and that people will worship the beast, and we automatically think that these signs will all happen overnight. But the truth is that it won't happen overnight. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. The God of this world is already at work. And that is what the Bible tells us. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 1 John 4, 3 But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. If you ask anyone around now, that if the Antichrist comes back with the mark of the beast, or if the time for the mark of the beast comes, will they receive the mark? The answer you will hear from most people is no. We know what the mark signifies, we know what it means, and we know where it is coming from. So I always used to ask myself, why on earth will anyone take the mark? Because it doesn't make sense to me. Why would anyone take it? How will the Antichrist and the devil plan out their recruitment for their mark? What approach will they use to get people to accept the mark? There are two major ways the devil will do this, and we will explain the two ways and how they are working in the world today. The two major ways are deception and idolatry. These are the plans of the devil to make people collect the mark of the beast. Now, how are these things playing out today? Let's look at deception. The first approach of the devil on any occasion is deception. There is a reason why Jesus called this being the father of lies. We know about technologies and those who invented them. Satan invented lies and deceit. John 8:44, King James Version. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your family ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own words, for he is a liar, and the father of it. One of the primary tactics of the devil is deceit. In the Garden of Eden, he used deceit. He tried it on Jesus, but failed. He will, and he is, using the same method today in the world. When the Antichrist comes and takes center stage, he won't come with red eyes and horns poking out of his head. He will come as a man of peace. He will deceive the world into believing that he is the solution to all the world's problems. And that is the deception he will come with. He won't let his true intention be known initially. The world will trust him, exalt him, uplifting him. The kind of approach he will come with will make people worship him. He will do things that others cannot do. He will bring solutions that others cannot. He will bring peace where others have failed. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4 let no man deceive you by any means, 
for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. The Antichrist will speak evil against God. He will say many bad things about God, just to deceive people, so that they can worship him. The Antichrist will shift the focus of people from God to himself. Revelation 13 verse 1 to 10 And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. He will look wonderful, be charming and successful. He will be energized by the very power of hell. You have never seen such demonic charisma. He will deceive people. He will deceive nations. He will deceive millions. He will be demonically energized. Millions will worship him. He will be an emblem of reconciliation. He will be a symbol of peace, a beacon of hope a path to utopia, a guiding light full of false promises. He will look like the solution and appear as an angel of light. He will come like a sheep, but he is a wolf. He will come like a lamb, but he is a dragon. He will come with no corruption, but he is full of corruption. The devil has real power. However, his power is nowhere near to the power of God. But nevertheless, he is a powerful being that should not be underestimated. After all, he is formerly one of God's highest angels and has the power to deceive and to emulate miracles. The second is material things. The devil will offer many people material things. Tell me. Who doesn't want to have a good life? Is there anyone on earth who would not want to become a billionaire? The devil knows this, and he will use the material things that will not last to deceive people into following the wrong path. Revelation 13, 16 and 17 And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Without the mark, people will not be able to buy or sell. This is one of the reasons why people will take the mark. Moving on to idolatry. The second method is idolatry, and this will come after people have been deceived. This is when you will see people worshipping other people. 
The Antichrist will be an idol, a celebrity when he comes. This man will be loved. He will be utterly adored by the world. Now I want to ask you a question. Don't you think the world is ready for him? We often sit in front of the television and watch movies. We watch sports. We see many things on the television and we love them. There are some musicians that we love. There are many sports people that we love. I am not saying that we should hate them. It is not bad to love the sport or the sports people, but it has gotten to a point where many people worship these artists or these athletes. There are basketball players that people bow to when they slam dunk. There are soccer players that people or the fans always bow to when they score. These things leave you wondering how have we gotten to this stage in the world. People now worship other human beings. You see concerts full of tens of thousands of people chanting a person's name, exalting that person, uplifting that person, literally thousands of people screaming someone's name. You say that that is not worship? Yes, it is. Look at the lyrics of a song we sing in praise and worship. For example, look at that song. Let your living water flow. Jesus, 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 sing to the Father, 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 Father. A song exalting the name of Jesus, but now you see people exalting other humans. It is idolatry. You see celebrities walking on the street and people are literally fainting at the sight of them. Two thousand years ago, idols were graven images and massive statues that people would bow down to and worship. But the devil moves with the time. We are now too sophisticated to be bowing down at some wooden statue. So modern day idols for us are celebrities. You should never sleep as a Christian. You shouldn't think that the plan of the man of sin will come only after the rapture or sometime later in life. John shared the revelation coming from the sea and the beast coming from the land. In 2 Thessalonians 2, the Bible was talking about a particular man called the man of sin. He was also called the son of perdition. The Bible says that this man will come in the last days. He will start to be operational in the last days. We need to get this clear so that we will have an understanding of when this man of sin will appear. Verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This man will be revealed to the world. Everyone will see this man in action. What will this man of sin do? Verse 4 continued, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Now we have seen that he has the same attributes of the beast that was mentioned in the book of Revelation 13. This man will speak blasphemy. He will position himself as God so that people will be able to worship him. When will this man start his work? When will people start working for him? Is it after the coming of Christ or now? 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 gave us the time when this man of sin will start his work. The NIV says, For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. 
we must be truthful to ourselves. The spirit of the Antichrist is already amongst us. He is already working, and we are not seeing it. 